anniversary. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Apostle. Look at your hair. Mm -hmm. Yes, come okay. on, we're, we're okay. grateful. Yeah, hey, amen. <laughs> Good to see each and every one of you out on tonight. Yes, do you know what today is? <laughs> it's our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, weren't, they, weren't, they weren't ready for that one. Yeah, we weren't ready for that one. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead on with, with, our, with our Breath of Life Discipleship Ministry. <laughs> Let's go ahead with our, our, our program. <laughs> program. <laughs> Amen. Let's go ahead and go with our program. They're not ready for another regular, program. regular, our regular schedule. scheduled program that, 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 that starts right now. So great, we're grateful to see each and every one of you. Yes, we are. And we're going to go Amen. start with a word of prayer as we open up our Breath of Life Discipleship Ministry. Father, we thank, thank you, we you, praise Father. you, we magnify you, and we love you for all things and for everything yes. we give you. Thanks, because Father, we we just thank you for just for being there for us. Father, we thank yes. you for give, for waking us up this yes, morning. Father to a day that we've never seen and father yes. we know as a day progress we'll never see this day again but we're thankful that so we thankful. got to say thank you father thank we got to say father. father we love you and we got to pray and we got yes. to commune with you and we got yes, to talk father. to you yes, to, to to see what is what what do you have for us to do yes amen father yes. as we go forth on this day father we thank you for being our for going before us and being our word god and, and yes. people smart hurt harm and danger seen and unseen throughout this day even as the weather is going father you control everything so you yes, know you everything that's going on yes. and father you know that we just we trust you and we depend upon you father we don't just we don't just depend we don't depend on 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 man and, and their yes. forecasts and, and the weather yes. man and all but father we depend on you we thank yes. you father we thank you father now father as we go forth with this with this discipleship training Father, we thank you that you open up our eyes and open up our ears to hear yes. what you have to say and open up our eyes to see what you have for yes. us, Father, on tonight. Yes. As the word go forth on tonight, we thank you that we're not only going to be hearers of the word, but we're going to be doors of the word. Father, we thank you for each and every ministry that is connected. We yes. thank you for the fivefold ministry that's connected, yes, Father. Father. Father, we just thank you, Father, for, for those ministries. Father, we thank you for provision. We thank you yes. for everything, Father. Yes, yes, we yes, just yes. love you and we praise you right now. Father, yes. there's any sick among us, if there's anyone that's not feeling well in their body, we yes, thank Father. you that you send your word yes. to heal them, to deliver them, yes. and to set them free, Father. We thank you that they have the, the, they have the testimony to say that you are a healer. You, you are, are a healer. deliverer. Yes, Father. You are a restorer, Father. Yes, you are, Father. We thank you and we praise you right now. We yes. just love you and we praise you. We pray this prayer in Yeshua's holy, mighty, and unbeatable name. Yes, Father. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Blessings, everybody. All right. All right. Yes. Blessings to each and every one of you as we go forth. We're going to have our communications by none other than Minister Marquita Samuel. Amen. Come on. Also, shalom, everyone. Welcome to Bold. Welcome to Bold. Thank you for joining us. And so again, remember each and every Tuesday morning, join us for prayer at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Our weekly prayer is on Zoom and you can access the link to join us on our website. And that is going to be www.bolim.info. And so you can find everything that you need regarding how to access Zoom, Bold, and anything else on our website. And so each and every week, you'll receive a replay text with the recording of the prayer. And if you would like to receive those text messages, please make sure you are a BOLIM subscriber. And so to be a BOLIM subscriber, you go to the website and you scroll all the way to the bottom and you click subscribe. And so this past Tuesday, the Curie Nation challenged us to use and apply the Activate Our Faith series to operate in greater faith so that we will continue forward with everything that we learned. And so this is a great reminder to activate our faith. And so thank you, Sister Janine and Jalen. And let's stay connected and invite a friend to join as we complete our prayer series now on Activate Your Faith. If you have any questions about the Tuesday morning prayer or the recordings, please email info at bolem.info and we'll be happy to respond. And next, you are invited to have an encounter with Yahweh each and every Friday morning at the Bolim DTC from 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Yahweh is personally inviting us to remove anything that is not like him 
in our lives and to seek and embrace his divine strategies and plans for his brand new harvest for us. This gather gathering is in person and now also on Zoom for all of those who are BOLIM subscribers. And this is a wonderful opportunity to have a personal encounter with Yahweh wherever you are. And so come ready to pray and engage with Yahweh each and every Friday morning. And next, as we continue to grow in prayer, you are invited to join Teacher Carol Patterson each and every night at midnight for the Worshiping Word Warrior Prayer Watch. The dial-in number is on the slide and no access code is needed. Teacher Patterson and those who join the call are continuing to press into Yahweh's word through worship, prayer, and exhortation. Please join and connect with this powerful ministry. All are welcome to participate. And next, you are invited to connect and donate to SOWER, which stands for Strangers, Orphans, Widows, and Emergency Relief. Elder Daphne Mitchell is the visionary of SOWER, and this powerful ministry reaches out to the homeless in the Houston region and beyond. You are invited to reach out to volunteer, donate, and learn more. The ways to donate are on the slide. You can donate via PayPal, Zelle, Cash App, or mail your seed. And remember, every seed has the power to produce. And next, Code of Many Colors Consulting and Design is offering appointed times items. Each of the items on the slide can be customized and you can select your shirt and size preference. To order any of these items or more from Comcad, please reach out directly to Elder Daphne Mitchell by texting 346-317-3987. And as we continue through the appointed times, please reach out to inquire about the other items she can create for you. Let's celebrate Yahweh's appointed times. And next, we have Rosebud Ministries. Prophetess Patricia Wright is the visionary of Rosebud Ministries, and this powerful ministry focuses on community outreach to widows and those who have experienced loss in the Houston region and beyond. Rosebud Ministries is inviting you to join them for Fragrant Fridays, which is the second Friday of each and every month at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Fragrant Fridays can be viewed live or by recording on Facebook Live on the Rosebud Ministries Facebook page or on YouTube at The Rosebud Ministries. This month's topic was about operating in a new season of community outreach and setting goals to make a greater impact. To learn more, to volunteer, please reach out to Prophetess, right? And the ways to donate are on the slide. You can donate via Cash App, Zelle, or through PayPal on the website. And remember... Rosebud Ministries, where your fragrance is required. And next, Breath of Life International Ministries is going to the Cayman Islands. And so attention, Grand Cayman Women of Life getaway attendees, please remember the following. The getaway is from August 5th through the 11th, 2024. Installments or full payment of your remaining balance can be made anytime via our standard ways of giving, Zelle, PayPal, and mail. Please note on your payment that you're giving towards the Women of Life trip by noting WOL trip. The full balance is due at the end of this month on June 30th. So that's very soon. <laughs> so remember the full balance is due at the end of this month. And lastly, please be sure you have a current passport as we are traveling internationally. If you have any questions, please email info at bowling .info. We cannot wait to see you there for a time of fun, fellowship and relaxation. And next, City of Life Global Title I, CDC, and NAM invite you to the STEAM Student Summer Camp 2024. This year's camp will be held from July 15th through the 19th, 2024. That's very soon, right? From 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Bolin DTC. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for children 7 through 18 to learn all about science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics as they engage with their peers and experienced professionals to expand their minds, prepare for their future, and have some fun. The camp is completely free and lunch will be provided. Registration opened on Monday. So how exciting. Registration just opened. And so you have a wonderful opportunity to register. Your children or volunteers can register. And please remember to tell a friend. And so the registration is STEAM Summer Camp 2024.eventbrite.com. Again, that is STEAM Summer Camp 2024.eventbrite.com. If you would like to donate to the STEAM Camp, the ways to donate are on the slide via PayPal or Zelle only. So PayPal or Zelle, 
the standard ways that we have to give and you can donate to the STEAM Student Summer Camp. And please notate your donation is to the STEAM Student Summer Camp so that everything will go where it needs to go. If you have any questions, please feel free to email info at bowling.info. We'll be happy to get back to you. But please register ASAP because this is going to fill up and it's going to be a lot of fun. And next, it is celebration time. <laughs> We're getting ready to celebrate Bolim and all that Yahweh has done through the 16th year anniversary. And so this year, the celebration, celebration will be in two parts, a powerful Sabbath service on Saturday, July 20th with Apostle Jerome Nelson at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time and a family fun day on Sunday, July 21st, 2024 at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And so save those times and dates because we will be celebrating. And feel free to bring your friends and families to join us both days as we press forward into the new that Yahweh has for Bolem. And now it is time for Prophetess Anderson in a very special communication. Yes. Blessings. Thank you so much, Minister Samuel. Please avail yourselves, those of you who are planning to send your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews to the STEAM summer camp. Go ahead and register before those slots fill up. And we're so grateful for those who have already registered and those who have already volunteered. Please go ahead and go right on over to Eventbrite after service tonight, STEAM Summer Camp 2024.eventbrite.com. We would love to see you there and we definitely need the volunteers and we do need your donations. So please and thank you and thank you for your support always. Thank you for your support of Bolim. Thank you for your support of City of Life. Thank you for your support of Ma'am. We cannot do this by ourselves. So thank you all so much. And yes, we turn 16, the sweetness of the 16. I know that's a tradition, but we're excited about what y'all will do and is doing in the life of Bolim. So we wanted to come on. Apostle started it off in the beginning. And today is an amazing day in our lives. And we want you to celebrate with us as we say congratulations to us for our 25th wedding anniversary. We are so excited that Yahweh has kept us 25 years, a quarter of a century. We do not take it lightly or for granted. It's one of the things that Yahweh uh, has done uh, in our lives. I say uh, to people, I was talking to a young man on yesterday who was asking about some advice about finding a wife and different things. And I was just saying, man, it's one of the most important decisions you'll ever make in your life. And so take some time to make sure you're going down the right path. He's trying to prepare himself for his wife. And it is um, really an amazing thing That's right. that Yahweh has brought us together. Hallelujah. And um, one of the purposes that we have in our lifetime was to meet each and every one of you. So you are part of our lives and we are part of yours and we're grateful for it. So we have shared our PayPal cash app and Zell, you want to listen unashamedly. If you want to send us to dinner, say y'all need to go on an anniversary <laughs> dinner. You know what? Y'all might need some new fragrance for your anniversary. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unashamedly, we welcome it. Um, we know this is the way that we have been blessed. We know this is the way that you will be blessed as you bless Yahweh's people, whether it's us or others. And so, um, but of course, especially your leaders, honoring your leaders in yes, this way. Yes, and yes, it's something yes. that we really want to make sure we're teaching. One of the things Holy Spirit uh, dealt with us about even about uh, celebrating our anniversary and putting it out there to the Bolamites is that we, this is something we did for our leaders, um, our pastors, whomever Yahweh put mm -hmm. us uh, to submit under their vision. And so we would dare not uh, let you miss out on the blessing. We've been blessed because of it, and we want you to be blessed too. Amen. So pray and obey if the Father moves you or tells you, yes, you 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 want to seed into your pastors for their anniversary. Please do so um, for our 25th wedding anniversary. And listen, all of all of the congregation and all of 
those who are married and are continuing in this journey of marriage and even those who desire to be married please know that we are praying for you we know how important of a step this is in your life and we want to make sure that yahweh is pleased and we always are praying that yahweh is pleased mm. with our marriage it is a covenant that he initiated and it's it's been sincerely mm -hmm. a wonderful 25 That's years right. it really has marriage relationships has its ups and downs it has its twists and turns you don't always um see eye to eye but i'm telling you with yahweh you can not only just make it like you're just hanging on but you can really flourish in your marriage That's right. and i'm grateful for that that i have that with your apostle I have that with you too. yes love you to life love you too, all right. All right, y'all. Right, we're we gonna dive in. Go okay. All right. You gonna stay on the camera or what? Okay. All right. So I'm gonna do this. Is that okay? Okay. All right. All right. Thank y'all. Oh, wait a minute. Is that the junior bride saying <laughs> <laughs> I better leave that alone? Thank uh, you, donation. Oh yes, as and she will let you know. Sister LaShonda Doyle. She was there 25 she, years ago. 25 years ago, she was our junior bride, and she was a beautiful junior bride, such a beautiful junior bride. So glad she's still in our lives in this manner and even in a greater way. We love you, uh, Sister LaShonda, and we love you all. Thank you for uh, the greetings, the text messages that we've already received and everything, calls and everything. We really appreciate you all as we continue to celebrate what Yah has done. Come on, y'all. Let's get excited. Let's enjoy. It's time really to enjoy our lives, like for real. You have worked hard even on today. You have done what you needed to do to come into bold on tonight to receive what Yahweh has for you. So come on and engage. Um, if if I can tell you anything today uh, amongst this week and different times, it's you go through trying times, you go through challenging times. You know, this is of course a special day for me being um, my wedding anniversary, but I'm, I'm on a work assignment and I have to do, you know, what father mandates me to do. Um, I face challenges. Uh, we are being very transparent and always want to be that way that there are things you come up against. I have some things that um, that we're facing as even as a um, organization that I'm asking Yahweh to move. I'm talking about my work organization. All of these things you go through as a person that is faced with grappling with, embracing, understanding your vision and your mission in this life, why you are here. You know, a lot of people talk about, oh, this is my why, and they'll, and I'm not demonizing it, and I'm not putting anybody out there if you've done it. Um, I'm, I'm not saying this about anyone in particular. They said, this is my why, and they'll point to their children, they'll point to their grandchildren, and all of those things. I wanna challenge all of us that our why needs to be whatever Yahweh says, okay? It needs to be what he speaks over our lives. I really believe in this series that we've embarked upon that if you will really avail yourself to what Father is speaking to you now, you will find yourself on the other side of this particular um, series, walking out the plan of Yah for your life. It is no more I, but it's Messiah who lives in me, has to be something that really resonates with you in this time, all right? So come on, let's go into apostles already prayed let's go into the word at this time and come on let's engage with what the father is saying all right so we opened up a new series on shabbat write the vision and run with it and you see the gentleman the silhouette of a gentleman but this is any person any anywhere you it's speaking to you okay don't think oh it's it's just for the men to run, it's for all of us to run 
with what Father has said, okay? So uh, tonight we're going to continue this journey, but remember it's about vision and we're gonna get into mission. If we could say um, a very short, uh, short way of putting it, vision is what Father has spoken that you're to, to um, if you wanna say it that way, you, you're supposed to be, and the mission is how you get it done, okay? And so we're gonna actually give the biblical uh, definition again tonight of vision, but just think about why vision and mission must be a marriage because you have to have the mission to actually to know the how to do it, okay? And that's what Father wants in the mission to be able to tell you. But in the vision, he's speaking to something deep inside of you that he wants to come and manifest in the earth. Um, now are we the sons of, of Elohim. The earth is groaning for the sons, the, the manifestation of the sons of Elohim, of the one and only Father, our Elohim God, okay? So let's advance, and we're just going to walk through again. Y'all, this is a, an important part of this teaching that we just review briefly, and it's going to get shorter and shorter just so we can keep it before you, that the previous series was what? Activate your faith. The baseline or foundational scripture was Hebrews 11 and 1, and belief is the substance of what is expected, the proof of what is not seen. You probably, every time you hear that um, that scripture from now on out, you not here on out, you're going to see prophetess from Tuesday morning prayer saying faith is the substance of things, not of uh, what is expected, the proof of what is not seen. I hear you, y'all, you calling me to activate my faith, all right? So this is a really pull, strong pull on us that Yahweh has given us this mandate to activate our faith, to make our faith active, all right? So let's advance. The series before then was I must work the works. It is necessary, come on, it is necessary for me to work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one is able to work, Yohanan or John 9 and 4. So Father walked us through this. He said, listen, you're going to have to activate your faith. This is the final portion before we got to vision and mission. But before then, he started stirring up that we have to work the works. No more excuses. We have to walk in what the Father has said for us to do working the works. All right, the previous, before then, before we got to I Must Work the Works, we did a series on you are capable, you are worthy, you are amazing, and that's exactly who you are. This is who you are, all right? And so come on, let's share some of those foundational scriptures, all right? Uh, Psalm 139, 13, and 14, for you, y'all, that's a big why. You possessed my kidneys. You have covered me in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you for I am awesomely and wondrously made. Wondrous are your works and my being knows it well. You have to know this within yourself. The, the things that we have faced, the trauma that we have endured has said and spoken another word over us. And we must get in the posture and in the position that we know that father has made us awesomely and wondrously and wondrous are his works and i'm part of his works and my being knows it well does your being know that yahweh has made you awesomely and wondrously these are things that you have to really really begin to meditate on as we go through this process let's advance another scripture here ephesians 2 and 10 for we are his workmanship created in Messiah Yeshua unto good works, which Elohim prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Do you know that you are his workmanship? Let me give you something because uh, for me being a psalmist, being a songwriter, being a, um, it, it's it's somewhat of a poet, you know, um, in, but in song, right? This is what, what the book of Psalms, the Tehillim is right it's psalms it's it's words 
that are put together, but set up with rhythm, right, and melody. And so when you look at that word workmanship in the Greek, it is poema. It is where we get the word poem, P-O-E-M, but in uh, the Greek, I believe there's an E on the end there, uh, poema. And so this is important that you understand that Yahweh sees us as his poem. He's, we are his workmanship. We are not something that he, you know, just threw together, okay? Back in my day, there was a saying in a song that God don't, God don't make no junk. Even though it was a double negative, I still have to say that it was a good message to children and otherwise that he does not make any junk, all right? Yahweh has made us for a certain purpose. And the sooner we get there and understanding, the more fulfilling our lives can be. Remember what Father said on Shabbat, it's not too late for you, no matter how old or how young you are, Father has something in this series for you to get into place for his glory and honor. Come on, let's advance. Remember this slide? What, what is Yahweh planning? You know, sometimes I know we want to micromanage and we want to look over his shoulder, but he says he knows the plans he is planning for us. Declares Yahweh plans of peace and not of evil to give you a future and an expectancy. You know what? The thing is, sometimes when I go back and read scripture, it really, there are certain words that stand out to me. And one of the words that stood out into this, um, this scripture for me this time around when I was meditating on it was his plans of peace. And I think sometimes we think of peace because we don't really understand the depth that what, which Yahweh is speaking. Yes, we, we get a portion of it, but maybe not the full understanding. Remember, Shalom is definitely uh, destroying the authority that is attached to chaos. The actual letters of Shalom bear that out, right? Shalom is peace. But there is also a fullness in this word that speaks about nothing being missing from our lives and nothing being broken. So the Father, you have to think about that, that he is planning for your life to have nothing missing and nothing broken. This is These are the plans he's planning. So when we're missing something and something is broken, that's not Yahweh's plan. He has another plan and we must understand what that plan is. So come on, let's advance. So the Father has a word for us on tonight before we get to the, the title or the topic of tonight's um, teaching. Let's go to the baseline foundational scripture for this series, write the vision and run with it. And it's Habakkuk 2 verses 1 and 2. I pray that you've been studying it, you've been meditating on it. Remember that um, if we're going to live harvest to harvest, this has to manifest in our lives on a daily basis. What do I mean? You cannot receive a word or scripture or revelation on Saturday and then pick it back up on Wednesday if you're going to live from harvest to harvest. Um, I have done that with physical plants and it doesn't work very well. Because I used to be an overwaterer, sometimes I've held back. And so, but if you don't tend to your seed on a daily basis, if you don't tend to what you have planted on a daily basis, even if it's just to check, to see how it's doing, to check if any bugs have gotten there, you will not be able to live from harvest to harvest, okay? You will always have more month than joy. You will have more month than peace, all the fruit of the spirit. You will have more month than you have the fruit of the spirit because you have not been nurturing and uh, uh, really tending to those fruit to make them flourish, all right? Y'all getting me? And so this is the same thing with every study that we do. We gave a word on Saturday. You are responsible on a daily basis to go back to those scriptures to hear what the Father is saying to you personally, all right? We give you the starting point as Yahweh gives us, but remember that we have spent time, hours, 
and even days in the word, really asking the Father, what do you want to say to your people? So by the time we serve it to you, it's not half baked, it's not doughy um, crust, no, it's some flaky, nice crust that you'll be able to digest it so that the Father can use it uh, to flourish in your life. So the foundational scripture for this series is Habakkuk 2 verses 1 through 2. And it says, I stand at my watch and station myself on the watchtower and wait to see what he says to me and what to answer when I am reproved. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and inscribe it on tablets so that he who reads it runs. So that's where we got write the vision and run with it. Come on, let's advance to the next slide. So I wanna get into this vision according to scripture. We did an exercise on Shabbat and remember no answer was incorrect, no incorrect or correct answers, just your opinion about what vision is. And everyone that wanted to share gave um, a, uh, um, uh, a definition of what vision is to them. And so now, Let's measure this according to what scripture says that vision is. Vision is Strong's Hebrew 2372. Again, if you do not have a Strong's dictionary, a physical one, you can go to blueletterbible.org and you can look up any scripture, any word in the scripture. And then you just say there's a, a you can click on Strong's, okay? And for every word in the Bible, Dr. James Strong has done extensive research to bring us back to the original meaning, at least for the Hebrew, the scriptures that are in Hebrew, which would be the Old Testament, to bring them to those original meanings. So vision, Strong's 2372 is Chaza, Chaza, okay? And it is to see, perceive, look, Behold, prophesy, provide. And I said this very boldly on Shabbat, and I'm going to say it boldly again. If you are calling something a vision and it is not prophesying to you, and I mean speaking from the heart of Yah, if it is not providing for you, I think we know the, the see, perceive, look, and even behold, right? But sometimes we, we, we didn't realize that the vision over our lives is supposed to prophesy to us. It is, what is prophecy or prophesy? It is to speak what Yahweh is speaking. It is to speak on behalf as though you are, are him, okay? This is why I don't take prophecy lightly or for granted. It is Yahweh's voice in the earth for us. And so, if that vision is not prophesying, it's not providing, then you need to look at it again and make some um, mandates on the vision and find out from the Father why it is falling short as a vision. Maybe it is not a vision. Maybe it's not a completed vision. Maybe it's not the full picture. Maybe you're missing some pieces to the puzzle and there's nothing wrong with you asking Yah, why isn't this vision over my life prophesying? Why does it seem like I'm always discouraged and I hear no words of encouragement over my life? That means that the vision is not working as Yahweh intended it to work. And so you need to really put yourself in a position that the vision can do what the vision was set for it to do in your life. This is why we're doing this series why we believe Yahweh said, write the vision. You're gonna to have to be able to articulate this thing. You're gonna to have to be able to say assuredly, this is the Father's vision for my life. When he sent me into the earth, this is what he visualized. This is the picture that he had. When you look at your life, do you believe in full that your life is what Yahweh visualized? Then if you, your answer is no, it means that you need to keep on progressing. You need to keep on seeking him. 
You need to keep on asking him for the vision for your life. Amen. So come on, let's advance. Father has a word for us tonight. He says, write the vision and run with it. This is part two. And the subtitle, our subtopic is overcoming your identity crisis. I already told Apostle that I likely would need to have this in a couple of parts. Um, I will not be ministering on Saturday. So uh, this Wednesday and, and possibly next Wednesday for us to walk through this because the first thing that you're going to have to do is admit that you're having an identity crisis, that you are not sure who you really are. I am not saying that um, you're sure who you are because of something someone else said. I am saying, do you know who you are according to what Yahweh has spoken? Are you living out the characteristics that Yahweh sent you in the earth with, or are you living out someone else's label, someone else's um, mandate for you, someone else who even may have meant well? I think a lot of times we demonize these things, but sometimes people mean really well for us, but it's just not Yahweh's vision for our lives. And so this is something that you have to take up with Yahweh and find out are the characteristics. When I walk in the earth, I was, I, Father, I told y'all, Father confronted me about a lot of things between first fruits and Shavuot this year. And when I start looking at characteristics of myself and how I behave on a daily basis, I begin to take inventory about, excuse me, whether or not these are characteristics these are tendencies, these are attitudes that father put in me, or are they learned behaviors because of my situation, because of my circumstance, because of my hurt, because of trauma that I've experienced. And I, I, let me take that back, it's not my hurt. Because of hurt I've experienced, because of trauma I've experienced, is this what I'm walking out? Is this how I'm making decisions? This is what I'm talking about when I say identity crisis. Am I making decisions based on desperation because of situations in my life? Or am I making my decisions based on who the father has said that I am? All right, these are questions. You're gonna have to question yourself and confront in yourself and have the father to answer and have him to minister to you about. All right, let's advance, let's advance. All right, so what is your purpose? Do you know why? I said my, my date of arrival, November 1st, 1971, in the afternoon at Bill Air Force Base. Why did the father decide even for you to be born where you were born, to be born at the time of day you were born. I'm not getting into any spooky stuff. This is not new age stuff. What, what time of year, all of it. There is a purpose for all of it. There's a purpose why Yahweh sent you into the earth in the year that he sent you. You know, I have some theories about myself that I told the father and he just laughs with me you know, and everything about it. And then he gets serious with me. Well, the real reason, thank you for your commentary, Marcelia. You know, this is why. And we need to understand that. What is, why was I sent into the earth? And when I leave the earth, I want to ensure that I have fulfilled the reason that Yahweh decided to, to bring me from out of eternity into time. Why did he do this? Why, why did he bring me into the earth, in the location, everything that I was born into, into the family I was born into? Why? What is the purpose for it? Father, I need some assistance with this. I need some insight. These are things we need to ask, no matter how young we are, no matter how old we are, 
all right? Season, semi-season, just getting your seasoning started, you need to know why you were sent into the earth. We have to get to a place, the father told me one day, he said, you have to buckle down to get this revelation because you have no time to be wandering any years in the wilderness. You have to know. Uh, he was saying to me, he said, if the children of Israel really understood my purpose for them in the earth, they would not have wandered for 40 years. If they really understood who I called them to be from jump, they would not have wandered for 40 years, period. He said, if they further would have understood my call to them when they went into the promised land, they would have never been taken into captivity because they would have done it the way I said to do it because they would know who they are. When you know your purpose, when you understand who truly you are, when you're not defensive, when you're not trying to make a point, when you're not with all of your walls up, who are you really? And who were you called to be in the earth? When you operate there, no matter what the father asks, demands, calls, instructs you to do, you will do it and you will do it at its fullest. This is the thing that the enemy is afraid of. This is what he is fighting you about, is that if you ever get out of your own way to do what the Father really said that you are in the earth to do, you are one dangerous person to him. We are dangerous to his kingdom when we do what Yahweh says to do. So come on, let's let's go to the next slide. Your purpose is right ahead, just ahead. Uh, there are a lot of scriptures that we can call on with this, but let's go to Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, verses one, ver, uh, I'm sorry, chapter one, verses four and five. It says, now the word of Yahweh came to me. This is your, excuse me, Yirmiyahu speaking. Now the word of Yahweh came to me saying, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I did set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to nations. All right. So I want to point out something to you all about this scripture and about the way Yahweh deals with us when we are seeking him. So Yirmiyahu is trying to get an understanding, just like Isaiah was trying to get an understanding when we see that he has uh, an encounter with Yah in the tabernacle. When he says, you know, I have unclean lips and I'm amongst the people of unclean lips. And he has that experience with Yahweh where the train of Yahweh's robe fills the temple. Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah is having this experience with Yah in this in this chapter. And Yahweh is letting him understand that first of all, before I formed you, you're gonna have to get this within your construct of your life, within the structure of your life, that before Yahweh formed you, he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew what we call quirkiness. He knew all of the things that would make you peculiar compared to other people, compared to others, you know, the way other people in your family. He already knew you before he formed you. And so you have to understand that before you came out of the womb, Yahweh set you apart. A lot of times people will say, well, that was a word for Yirmiyahu, but you have to think about if Yahweh has a vision for you, why wouldn't he set you aside for that vision? He has sanctified you for a vision that he has called you to walk out in this lifetime. And then he goes on to say another word to Yirmiyahu. He said, I appointed you 
a prophet to nations. And so these words that Yahweh is speaking to him is giving him clarity. It's giving him assurance. It's giving him insight. It's giving him revelation. That's what it's giving him. You are going to have to get to the place where you say, I don't care how long I have to fast. I don't care how long I have to pray. I need this kind of encounter with Yah. I need to be assured. I hear them teaching us all the time that we have a purpose, but I need to know that I am worthy, capable. I'm amazing. These feelings of insignificance and unworthiness, I have to have you to confront them, Father, because I can't live my life like this. I was saying this to the Father. I said, listen, I said, this is, this is just me talking to you. And I just want to be very open and honest, you know, with you, Father, that I cannot live my life without revelation from you. I cannot live my life without understanding what you would have me to do. So I need to, some places in my life, I'm going to have to roll it on back because I think that I have gone into things thinking I understood, thinking I knew, and you're showing me something that's revealing that maybe I need to take a step back and see the 30,000 view, foot view again. Maybe there's something that I've missed because I've gotten into the details of things that I can't see the forest for the trees. I can't see the big picture that you have for me. I am starting anytime I find myself frustrated and um, I call it, and I, I didn't coin this term, but I call it majoring in the minor. When I start perceiving that I'm dealing with small stuff compared to my big ya and this big vision that he has for me, when I start seeing a negative pattern form, like a cloud is forming in the sky and I see that negativity is starting to put a tent together, then I realize I need to take a step back. Something is happening. I'm getting off course on what the father has said because it's more than me. It's more than what I think. It's more than what I understand. It's more than the trauma I've experienced. It's more than the hurt and the disappointment I've experienced in my life. It's more than the loss that I've experienced in my life. So somewhere I'm getting into a pattern that is going down a road that is baiting me into um, patterns of failure, patterns of disappointment. Ooh, and this one, this one, this one presents itself to me pretty much on a daily basis. Patterns of anxiety that are rooted, it's really, patterns of fear rooted in anxiety and patterns of anxiety rooted in fear. They, they both have some roots somewhere that's trying to connect to me. And I have to keep meditating on the word of Yah. I have to keep saying, and this is what, this is how we're gonna overcome. This is how we overcome. This is how we overcome is through the word, the words of our testimony, the blood of the lamb. How do we overcome? By speaking the word that Yahweh gives us to speak, all right? So you have to get within the construct of your being in the very structure of who you are that Yahweh has a vision for you. And it needs to be at your core so that you can decipher discern whether or not you are walking out that vision or are you walking out an alternative plan that yahweh has not called you into i used to think it was hard to get on that alternative plan but as i've gotten older i realize and wiser and more mature and yah that it's just it could be a small slip and you're off the road of Yah and onto something else. And if you're not really watchful, if you're not asking the Father, 
for feedback on a regular basis, like daily, multiple times a day, you can slip into something else. And so you have to be, and this is not fear or, you know, fear of failures, all of those things. This is saying, Father, I need to need you to lead me and guide me. And in the day and the age that we live in, when our attention is being bombarded with visual things, messages, and all of this, that we are secure in who Yahweh has said we are. We got to be secure in that. So come on, let's advance to the next thing. So we have to overcome obstacles. And I know maybe I didn't name the one that you're dealing with right now or that you've been having, but fear, doubt, unbelief, hurts, insecurities, self-doubt, trauma, feelings of insignificance, feelings of unworthiness, all of these obstacles, feelings of um, um, I can't do it, I, I'm, I'm inferior to others, I'm lower than others. All of these things come from a place. It comes from things that we've experienced in our lives. And um, I was speaking to a father on this week who was saying about some challenges that he's facing with one of his children. And he said, I don't understand. I just came out of this with one of my other children. And Holy Spirit was saying, you can't quite say this right now. I'm going to give you what to say. But this is a pattern that he stepped into that he didn't realize when he stepped into it or otherwise he would have come right back out of it. And so once he got one uh, of the children on track and it took 10 years to do that, to get things in order. And once he did, he then went into the beginning of this one and he has this feeling like, am I going to have to wait 10 more years? You know, life is precious is all of these things. And father was saying to me, he said, see, this is what immaturity does. He said, listen to what he's sharing with you concerning his children. He said, immaturity speaks about what others have not done for you and how they were not there for you, how they didn't put you in the right position for your life. He said, it's immaturity that begins to speak. He said, but when I am maturing you and I am getting you in a different posture, then you begin to look at yourself and say, listen, listen, Marcelia, you're not going to be able to blame anyone else or to shrug this off to anybody else. At some point, you're going to have to look in the mirror and say, I've had these hurts. I've had these pains, but I must allow Yahweh to confront them, overthrow them so that I can overcome. I have to be an overcomer and not a victim. I am victorious. I'm more than a conqueror in Yeshua's name, right? You're more than a conqueror. So you can't live your life under these obstacles. You must over, overcome them overthrow them and remember build that excuse me altar to yah in this time everything that i'm doing i'm saying father am i building something as a memorial to you as a remembrance every time i remember what you have done and what you are doing am i building something that's going to glorify you we have to overcome the obstacles you're going to have to really get in there in the trenches with yourself and say look i'm having an identity crisis because i know that yah somehow i just know it i may not know the details but i know he has greater he has something greater than this for my life i know he does i'm thinking about it every day I, he's got something better for my life. This is this this can't be it. This can't be all that the Father has for me. I know He has a master plan. I know He has a vision, but there are some obstacles 
There are some things that are blocking me from operating in that vision that he has for me. For op, from It's something that's blocking me are some things that are blocking me from operating in the fullness of who he says I am. If I'm his workmanship, I'm his workmanship. There's no if, ands, or buts about that. When it says made by Yahweh, y'all know how we have those tags made in USA. And all, when it says made by Yahweh, it is exactly what it says it is. I am made by Yahweh. And if I'm his workmanship, I'm going to have to operate as though I'm his workmanship. So I am in between places. I am in between the place that I know Yahweh has something greater for me and dealing with my right now, my situation, my circumstance, my you don't understand prophetess, you don't understand my sisters and my brothers, you know, I'm father, I'm, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with this, but I know it's greater. I'm dealing with this, but I know you have a greater plan. I'm dealing with this, but I know you said something. I'm dealing with this. It's a tug of war in your mind. And you're going to have to say, Father, I, I have a choice to make. And you do have a choice, by the way. You have a choice. Now, one of the choices you make will have wonderful, wonderful outcomes. Harvest to harvest life, all those. The other choice will not land you where Yahweh wants you to be. That one choice that I'm speaking about is to just stay where you are. Status quo. This stuff they talk about, that's too much work. I don't want to look. I've been living with that trauma all this time. It'll be all right. It's the devil that I know. It's the demons that I know. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You start overthrowing. You start shaking the nest. You start poking the bear. I don't know what, what's going to happen to me. You start trying to overthrow the wasp nest. I, I don't know. I don't know, prophetess. I, look, I've been living with this hurt. I'm doing okay. Status quo. It's that wrestling with staying where you are. And if you do that, you're going to have what you have. This is just an honest conversation we have to have with Yahweh. But that other decision that you feel something, come on, y'all, you know you feel something tugging on you. That tugging on you to go higher and to do more and to live a better life and a greater life, that tug is coming from Yah. The scripture says no one can come to me. No one can, can come close unless I draw him by my spirit. Yahweh is drawing you by his spirit. And if you go with the tugging of your heart by Yah, you're going to end up in the place where he wants you to be. Don't be halted between two opinions. But that's where we've spent a lot of our lives, unfortunately between what we, we know. We might not know the details. Y'all heard what I said. We might not know it all, but we know Father is tugging on us. We know it's, man, there, there have to be more than this. And that place of, well, I do know how to operate here. When you think about it, I was thinking about this because I just walked one of my team uh, members, uh, one, a person there that uh, works for me. Um, through this process of, of applying and attaining the level of expert within our company. And so when I was reviewing everything with them and walking through this process, this process has been going on for a while. He had to go before a global committee to present, you know, why he should be named an expert in our company, not a small task to complete. So this is not a, 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 a panel of your peers. These are your above. They are already experts. They know they've been experts. These are people who will tell you in a heartbeat, uh, go back again. And in fact, you ain't going to make it to the committee, right? Once they read your, your, um, all your submissions. Took him months to get this done, to get everything written. And long story short, when he appeared before 
the committee, they not only interviewed him, but I had to do a presentation on why, why do you think that he's an expert? Well, some of the questions that they ask him when they ask him because of sometimes how we do about ourselves, I noticed that he was a little bit more timid. When they got to me, I was like, listen, he can be modest. I'm not going to be modest, you know? And I said, this is why, this is why, this is what he's done. This is, this is what he is doing. This is what he has before him. Because I can speak from a standpoint of not self-deprecation or self, oh, well, I don't want to seem like I'm, no, he does this, this, this has helped in the teams because of this. And so when they reached back out to me and they said, uh, we want to congratulate, you know, you, you give him the congratulations. He's made it to this, this place. And last week I got the opportunity to go to Denver in person to congratulate him and take he and his wife out and just say, you know, how much I appreciate all the work that he does on the team. Then, uh, today when I received the letter about his elevation. Now he knew his, his elevation would come with increase. I knew his letter, you know, the letter when it would, come, it would come with increase, but you don't know, they don't tell you how much. And so when I began to read it and everything, father said, I want you to take a step back and think about the process and how you were involved, but he had to do this work. He could have stayed where he was. He could have said, I'm good. I got, he was uh, like advanced level or whatever level it was. I think actually he skipped a level advanced and went from intermediate to expert, I think. Yeah, that's right. And so he did all of this. He said, but the outcome is that he is bequeathed. He is known, you go and you look him up in the directory. And it's going to say expert. You go in uh, effective in a couple of weeks, his increase financially is going to reflect it. He said, this is what I'm trying to say, daughter, to my people, that there's something you're going to have to do to get there. And you're going to have to get out of your own way. You're going to have to stop saying I'm little bitty. I am more than that. What I appreciate, this is what father said to me. He said, now you spoke boldly about his accomplishments more boldly than he even did. He said, that's what I do with you all. When, when, when Yeshua is an advocate, goes before Yahweh on our behalf. This is what he does for us. He speaks boldly. He said, you have an advocate with the father. You have a mediator with the father. These are all y'all attorney terms. Am I right? Am I right? Thank you. Please raise your hand. The, the, our lawyer, come on. You, uh, is it right? Is an advocate and a mediator have to do with law? So when you go into the court system, when you go into the courts of heaven, you have an advocate, you have a mediator. So even if I'm not quite there yet, Father still places an advocate and a mediator on my behalf. But guess what the Father said to me? He did the work, Marcelia. He did what it took to be elevated. He was intentional about getting this elevation. It was one of, one of the things he believes is the vision for his career. So it wasn't just so he could get a bigger check. It's because he has vision about what he believes he needs to accomplish in this life. Amen. So we got to overcome those obstacles to get to our harvest to harvest. That place in Yah that we live out his vision. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> daughter. It's quiet. Thank you. I'll take it. I'll take it. So come on, let's advance. Let's advance. So Philippians 4 and 13, I told you I'm going to need a, a, another, at least one more teaching about this because I want us to have a few minutes to talk about this. 
but you have strength to do all through Messiah who empowers you. You can do this. I said about the hurdles and here we go. The obstacles, the barriers, however you see it. Father will give you the wherewithal to clear those barriers and to clear those hurdles that you need to clear in your life. But there's something that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to come in alignment. If if this young man, uh, it's a it's a graphic. It's it's um, licensed properly by by us, right? But whatever he was deciding to do, he might have just been taking the picture. But let's just in our imagination say that he was showing up for a race. At least he showed up for the race. At least he put on the proper attire. All of these things, these steps that we have to take to get in position for what Father wants to do through us, we are without excuse. Children of the Most High, we are without excuse. We don't have any more excuses about what we did not have, what we did. Remember what the Father said, immaturity begins to speak and say, well, you know, I went through this. And Yahweh is not being crass or harsh about the pain and trauma that you have endured. But, it, but what he is saying, I shouldn't say, but I don't want to cancel out that part and what he is saying. So let's connect the two. And what he is saying is that he wants to use it for his glory. He wants to use it for his honor. He wants to use it to tell others that they can make it through the trauma as well. And not only make it through and just hanging on, but make it through victoriously. So we're going to have to come out of that mindset of nothing ever works for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. No, I may not know what I'm going to do yet. Change some things about what you're saying. I don't know what to do yet, but I'm confident about this one thing. Yahweh is going to speak to me. He's going to give me what to do. I can do this with his help because he gives me strength. He, he strengthens me. It's not by my own strength, but by his strength. Come on, let's advance. We're, we're closing out. I want to say this as we're walking through overcoming our, and I, I, I wrestle with whether or not I should just say overcoming identity crisis. And Father said, no, ma'am. He said, because y'all gonna have to own that there's some things, there's some wrestling going on within you. And when you make up your mind to overthrow the wrestler that's wrestling inside of you, remember what happened when uh, Jacob, right? And Esau, was they were wrestling even in the womb. There's some wrestling going on. And their mother said, there's, there's two nations wrestling. We have to understand there are things wrestling on the inside of our wounds. The, the ones that, the wounds, and, and this for men and women, right? What you're going to birth into the earth is some wrestling going on. And Father is saying that, are you going to allow insecurities to win? Are you going to allow poverty to win? Are you going to allow doubt to win? Are you going to rise up and say, I have the power through Messiah who gives me strength? So I want to say this to you because there were points in my life that Father said this to me. And when he put this on my heart and my mind, I just want to tell you, whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, never, ever give up on yourself. Never give up on yourself. You are too precious to Yahweh. You're too precious to the kingdom of Yah for you to give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Sons and daughters of the Most High, this is the time to rise up and say, I have something to give. I have something to offer in this life. I Do y'all know at 52 years old, I still tell the Father, I, I thank you for the ways that I have impacted the earth in my time up to now, but I know there's more in me to change this world. I know it's more in me to change the earth. I know it's more in me to do more. 
So what, where are we going with this? I want to know. I want to understand. So you have to keep that fire churning and kindling within you that you have something to offer in the earth, in your lifetime. So don't give up on yourself. Never, ever, ever. Don't give up on you. Keep the dream alive. This, this is, these are not my words. This is from Yolanda Adams' song, Never Give Up. You know, don't give up on yourself. If something in you inspires you to fight, come on, don't, don't stop. But never give up on yourself. Keep moving forward, even when it seems like nothing is working. Even when it seems like you're not gaining ground. Even when it seems like sometimes hope is lost on a matter. Don't give up. Tell the father, I'm, I'm not going to give up this time. I'm not going to give up on Look, if you can't see it in yourself, just not to give up on yourself, say it like this. I did this for a while until I can get myself in the right posture. Father, I refuse to give up on what you've placed inside of me. I refuse to give up on what you've invested in me. You invested the life of your son in me. And I refuse to give up on that. He gave, you gave me everything. And I refuse to give up on that. So until you can get to a place where you see yourself differently, see yourself as one who Yahweh would have sent. I promise you he would have. He would have sent Yeshua if it was just for you. He would have sent him just for you. So you got to see that he sacrificed everything for you and me. So don't give up on what he seeded in you. So come on, I believe we're at the last slide. We're gonna, it's time to write and run with it, y'all. I'm gonna show y'all this every time, every time. It's time to write and run with it, okay? So we're gonna keep on uh, next Wednesday, next uh, this Saturday we have something else we'll be doing. And then next Wednesday, we're gonna pick this up because I wanna talk some more about this identity crisis, but we have about 15 minutes. Let's open up at this time for your questions and comments. Please um, be honest about things that you may be facing that you wanna ask questions about because what we want to do in this time is be honest and be truthful that we have some things that we need to overcome in this time. And, and this time we're gonna overcome it in Yeshua's mighty name. We are overcomers. Come on, anybody wanna share anything even if it's something that you got out of the lesson that you wanted to share, we're open to whatever the Father wants to speak through you. Okay. Questions, comments? Come on, Apostle Dandy. Okay. Thank you so much, Prophetess, and happy anniversary again. Thank you. Thank you so much. We um, thank you for this. <laughs> series when you started this series on Shabbat um Holy Spirit sent me to listen to, Shabbat, to, to it again a second time and he said to me this particular series I need you to pay as close attention to as you've never done before wow so, you know, others are good but this one and I'm listening today and I'm like okay father I hear you because for me and, and, and you and I would have had this, this conversation before, um, even with coach, <laughs> um, yes. it, it's easy for me to walk the process through for others and see the results. But I'm in a time in my life where I have, my own process yes ma'am that i have to walk through and as you were listening um as you were going through i'm like okay father okay because some of these questions i've had to grapple with for myself yes over these past couple of weeks because once you start 
being deliberate about understanding who you are. It's not, not like I don't know who I am, but I really don't know who I am, if that makes sense. Yes, it does make sense. Right? And, and so Holy Spirit began to challenge me with some things, and he challenged me about my daily, he started challenging me about my daily behaviors. Mm. And I was sort of like, oh, okay. And then there were some things that I noticed that whenever I start a project, certain things begin to go progressively downhill. Mm. When I start a project for myself, pertaining to me. And this time, it really got under my skin to the point mm. that it became extremely emotional because now I'm recognizing, hey, I'm, next year I'll be 60. <laughs> and this cannot happen anymore. That's right. So I've got to figure out now what is it because I've got to make it from harvest to harvest this That's time. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so it it has been a process. And as I have been talking to him, he said something to me this morning that shook me to the core. Hmm. He said, you believe you have faith, but you don't trust me. Come on, Apostle. I wanted to go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cover is over my head. Get back up. Can we do this one over? <laughs> Let's do this again. Let's try again tomorrow. <laughs> Let's try again. Um, and that really did a number on me because there were certain things that happened that I asked help for and it was still bothering me that I had to ask for help because I kept saying I shouldn't have to ask for help in these particular ways. Why am I here? Why am I still here? So as you were going through tonight, I got some of the answers. Praise Yahweh. You know, what is it that baits me into this pattern of these specific types of failures? Yes. Because what it does is it discourages me. And then now I refocus on somebody else's dream. That's right. To take my mind off what's not going right for me. So, okay, if I can help them accomplish, then I'll feel better about myself. Yes, that's what I'm called to. This this is what a minister is supposed to do, right. and I pacify myself with that. So, going through this tonight has and and like I said, with the things that Father has been like, just sort of, you know, like get your act together, young lady. Don't let me have to pull the whip out. <laughs> conversations. I am excited to see what the other see parts of this series is going to be about and I, I wanted to thank you for being obedient because yeah I'm going to have some of those ouchy ouchy with tears moment I'm sure while we get, once we get off here but it's yes. and I thank you so much for it bless you apostle thank you for your transparency because I really believe that this is it when you just said for me as a minister it really resonates because I had to come to grips with, and again, being very transparent with all of you, because I want to see you free. When you know truth, you can give freedom. It's a principle of scripture. And um, I have this thing, had this thing, Apostle Dandy, of needing to be needed and not only needing to be needed, but then wrapping my identity and my value around that. So when things weren't going the way, exactly what you said, the way I thought it should for the vision that Yah had given me, 
then I would refocus my attention because I, I can get you to yours. I really can. A father would be like, nope, not going to help you this time on that because now it's about dealing with you and how you need to progress and mature and develop. Apostle, if we don't do this, we're going to look up at 60, at 70, at 80, and mm -hmm. we're still going to see those things that Yahweh wanted to confront at 50, at 60, at 70. Mm -hmm. We'll still be dealing with the same patterns, mm -hmm. and it's a trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean the, the patterns of Yah, the patterns of defeat, the yeah. patterns of fear, the mm -hmm. patterns of doubt, patterns of feeling like we're not worthy. All of those things will continue instead of us overthrowing it because then we get we get um well i spoke that word to them and it i i have <laughs> i've spoken many words that have come to pass and praise yahweh man that gives mm -hmm. me joy in everything however mm -hmm. come if the <laughs> word that he's spoken over my life does not come to pass mm -hmm. why yeah why can others hear from me and go into that word and i'm not able to go into the word that yahweh has spoken over my life yeah. there's a problem and it's in my identifying yeah. who i really am yeah. and where my value really comes from and you're absolutely right i've done it i've masked my own pain and disappointment with throwing myself into someone else's vision and i can't do that anymore i've got to I have to work the works that Yahweh has given for my life, which praise Yah includes even this teaching tonight, but then we got to move into some other things that Yah has said as well. May I just add two more things and I'll be Absolutely. Um, as you were speaking and, and you know, you're, you're referring to him as father. I think that that's one of our problems. Yes. We don't see ourselves as a daughter or a yes. son. So and I true. think that that's something that we need to study. What does yes. it mean to be a daughter of Yahweh? Yes. So look it up in, in, in Hebrew and in the Greek, and you'd be surprised at what you find. That's right. And the other thing was even with the um, hurdle, the, the picture of the young man jumping over the hurdle, yes. as he was jumping over it, one of the things I, I thought about was, like you said, he prepared. And, and I love that you said, even to his garment. Yes. And there are some things that Yahweh is going to require us to change, yes, even down to our garment. Yes. You know, and what if then the thought occurred to me, what if you jump over the hurdle, you are doing well and you fall? It doesn't negate everything that has already been done. Come it on, just apostle. means you get up, you keep going and you prepare for the next hurdle, because in as many times as you fall down, you will figure out what you did wrong maybe you took us you, you you let off that foot one step too early or one step too late so it's yes for, for now for me to go back and realize okay what was it at this particular point and can i pinpoint yes. a particular place that this happens yes and yes. that's one of the things that yahweh did for me this week he pinpointed a Thank particular you, place that these things happen. And he said, this is where your trust is going to have to come in. So I just wanted to share that as well. Thank you so much. And you're so right. I'm not going to get into that tonight. I'm going to address these uh, questions and comments uh, in the chat, but I'm telling you that the father portion and the pinpointing is so critical for us in this time. And those are things that prayerfully will come up for us all during this this uh, particular uh, series. So thank you again, Apostle. Sister Jaja, I, I really want to say to you, uh, bless you for uh, speaking about the, the lesson. But she says, how do you allow Yahweh to deal with you about things that hurt you to the core, especially when you keep praying about it and seems like you still don't see the changes happening? Let me tell you, I've been there. I have dealt with that. And the, the key word that is in this whole question is that word that you ask, how do you allow? 
And that's what it's going to have to be. You allowing Yahweh to confront you about these things and give you some truth about the things that hurt you so that you can overcome. Before you go, and you know, I know we will discuss some things about that. And uh, and of course, you know, we can talk about some things in private. The thing is, you got to get to a place where you allow him to go in and do that surgery. And that means some anesthesia might be, be in order. So some numbness around that place so he can dig up all of that hurt and dispose of it and then replace it with what, you know, put things in order inside of you. It's a process that you have to allow him to do this. You have to, because if you don't, praying about it is one thing. And I want everybody to hear my heart, hear Yahweh's heart on this. Praying about it is one thing, but getting instructions about how to overthrow it and walk in victory is a totally different story. And ask me how I know. It's because I've walked through that process. Father, I'm praying. I'm fasting. The Father said, but you haven't changed your, your behaviors. Your behaviors that got you there in the first place, you haven't changed them. So no, I'm not going to allow you to just come out and you're just going to go right back in. And so because I didn't understand that it was patterns that I had opened the door to, then he has to get to the core of it. But if you allow him, and with some help and some guidance, you'll be able to overthrow those things. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I know. And so let's talk some more about that. All right. Thank you for being open and honest. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Amen. And that's the thing, y'all. This is something we really, really have to let go of. And this has been a big thing for me is that um, I remember, I'm gonna say this really briefly, I know it's about time for us to go. I remember at the, at the retreat, the minister's retreat last year in Jamaica, Apostle Dandy walked us through a process of some things that I didn't even realize that I was, I was stuck in a place trying to require something of people that they could not give me and then had the nerves to then judge them for something that they could not get. But I didn't know it was a revelation I had never experienced. Well, I had a choice to make when she uncovered it. I could have been like, well, she's our daughter and she, no, <laughs> thank you apostle for having the wisdom of this thing so I can be free. I had a choice to make. Am I gonna let this go and say they just could not give me what they didn't have or am I going to keep them in that place and guess what keeping them in that place kept me in bondage all right you have to confront some things and understand people cannot give you what they don't have so that you don't get stuck in that cycle so that's another really key point in all of this as well when you're going through um deliverances and freedom I think sometimes people get, when you talk about deliverance, they start thinking, oh, okay, you, you're just going to go through that. And you go through deliverance to be different on the other side. And for you to be different, the other persons may stay the same. The other people, they might be the same, but you come out a changed son or daughter. All right. Uh, one more thing. Uh, thank you. Uh oh, thank you, Sister Deshaun. Amen. Yes, yes. Yes, amen. Listen, I used to say it too. So this I'm speaking from my own experience that there has to be more than this. So yes, if you seek Yahweh, even with just that part, just that part, he'll use it to give you the more that you're talking about. You say this, I know this can't be all the light. Not when someone came that I might have life and have it in abundance. All right. So y'all, I know our time together is uh come to an end for tonight but join us you do not i promise you do not want to miss encounters with y'all on friday and you do not want to miss uh a saturday shabbat worship has something very special for you and i know you're going to be blessed challenged and changed come out those who are uh, with us remotely make sure you say father i'm going to be engaged 
with what you are saying in this hour. Come on, let's go to the Father in prayer. Pastor, did you have anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We love you. We adore you. Thank you for this time together. We do not take it lightly and we do not take it for granted. Father, as we go forth in this time, I'm asking unashamedly on my behalf and the behalf of my brothers and sisters and even my sons and daughters, y'all are both to me, right? Uh, my brothers and sisters and you, Father, my sons and daughters, because you brought them to us in that manner. I pray that you would do something in them that they can't even explain initially. Confront them and pursue them with your love. Father, you've done it for me. Your, your love is so overwhelming when you are confronting us to make us who you want us to be. So we willingly get on that potter's wheel because we got to talk about those things in this time getting back on that potter's wheel. It doesn't always feel good, but we're willing so you can mold us and make us into who you really say that we are. Father, give us to have ears to hear that, that more. Father, keep drawing us by your spirit to that we may, may look at our situation, but we know it's more. You're calling us for more. You want more for us and from us. And so, Father, I pray that we will discover it by your spirit because you will lead us to that place of abundance that you've called over our lives. May we live out the vision in full that you have for us and leave this earth empty of everything that you wanted us to pour out in our lifetime. Father, we thank you that you do have a vision and mission for us and we will discover it and we will walk in it. It is indeed in the matchless, holy, unbeatable, incomparable, and incomparable conquerable name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and bless Yahweh. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to the Lamb. Blessings to everybody. You see the ways to give. Y'all see and pray and obey. Yahweh has great plans for you. They're going to we can stop the recording, so if y'all want to wait until they stop it to say shalom. <laughs>